I said I could get you started, and you've certainly grasped the fundamentals of crafting. That's all I can teach you. To become a master artisan, you must learn the crafting styles of all the worlds of the spiral. If you wish to continue your studies, you should go to speak with William in Krakatopia. He will be happy to continue your training. Are you thirsty for knowledge? I can help. So, Miss Tangletree sent you to me, eh? From the looks of you, you're still a novice crafter. Only able to craft one thing at a time before resting. Under my teaching, you'll earn another crafting slot. You'll be able to craft two items at once. I need you to go and make two rings of insight to demonstrate to me that you know what you're doing. Bring them back to me, and we'll talk.
help you? Oh, yes, of course. You're the one I was told about. I'm Principal Monstrologist, Gilda Burke. Thanks for coming. Headmaster Ambrose is allowing me to recruit talented and studious young wizards for an exciting new elective program, Monstrology. It's an ancient practice from my home world, Albion, and I've come to share Monstrology throughout the spiral. So let's get started. The motto of Monstrology is Know Thine Enemy. You'll learn to profile your enemy, extract their strengths, and use them to your benefit. We use special monstrological extract spells to enchant damage spells, which can then capture an enemy's very essence or animus. An enchanted spell that deals damage will result in extraction of one animus, plus an additional animus is extracted with a defeating hit. Now pay attention here, because this is very important. To formally collect the animus you've extracted, you must win the duel. Once you've successfully collected an enemy's animus, their profile is added to your monstrology tome, so you can reference them at any time. There's much more to monstrology than that, of course, but I find it is easier to do than to listen. It's high time for some field work. Take this extract undead animus spell and use it to capture the animus of any undead enemy you'd like to profile. Well, almost any. Since you're new to monstrology, you'll want to tussle with a low-level enemy to maximize your chances of animus extraction. Start with the Lost Souls on Unicorn Way. Extract one Lost Soul animus, then return here and we'll wrap up your introduction to monstrology. Are you able to extract an animus from an undead enemy? Oi? Cracking! Now it's time I show you the myriad ways monstrologists use animus. The monstrology tome, notwithstanding, my personal favourite application of an animus is to create a summon monster treasure card. It's like an echo of the enemy you extracted it from, which can be summoned in combat, but not unlike the way one summons a minion. You can also create an expel monster treasure card that's basically an instant defeat, one shot silver bullet against a particular monster. If you've the proper lodgings, Animus can also be used to create house guests, as well as monster echoes that your friends can duel. And don't worry if your house isn't equipped with a Joe sigil. That's what the monster dome is for! Now, if you've any questions, or simply feel the need for a refresher, consult the Monstromnibus here at any time. And remember, as your monstrology level increases, so does the amount of monstrological spells you're privy to! So, keep an eye out for me and your journeys throughout the spiral. Until then, welcome to Monstrology! Go on then, get
Kraken! As the professor of life magic, it falls to me to tell you about a wonderful new activity available to students. I speak of gardening. Students at Ravenwood can plant and grow amazing plants in their dormitory rooms or castles. Wizards of all schools can garden, so my hope is that every student will learn the joy of shepherding new life. There is so much to learn about gardening, and I know just the person to teach you. Seek out Farley in Gollum Court. He will explain the basics of gardening to you. Greetings, my little wizard friend. You look like you're in need of some learning, and I'm happy to oblige. And if it's not too much trouble, I'll ask you for a small favor once I've finished yapping. So, where to start? Well, let me tell you about how gardening works. It all begins with the tiniest of things, a seed. That's it, a seed. Do you have a seed with you? Surely you must. What's that? You don't? Oh dear. And we're off to a poor start. Tell you what. Will you run over to speak to Blossom, the life tree in the midst of Ravenwood? Ask her for a seed. Any type will do. She should set you up with something to get you started. Be off then, will ya? Good day to you, young wizard. What can I do for you? A seed? Farley sent you? A most unusual request, but I should be able to help you. A plant's journey of life begins with it as a seed. There are many types of seeds, each with a different destiny. With enough energy, you can prepare soil of your choice in your castle, if you have one or a planter in your dorm. Then, you can place the seed into the readied soil. After a time, it will begin to grow. You can shepherd its growth through spells and other means of caring for it, creating an environment for it to thrive. I will give you a seed. Take it back to Farley. He will tell you more. Oh, you've got that seed? Fantastic! I recommend you roll up your sleeves and learn something about gardening. Let's see what kind of seed Blossom saw fit to give you. Oh, what's this? A dandelion? That'll do nicely. After you've planted your dandelion seed, it starts to grow. From seed to seedling, young plant, mature plant, to elder. You can use a number of helpful spells to usher it along as it grows, keeping it healthy and happy. Take a look at the row of four dandelions to the side of me, and examine each of them. When you're done, come back and I'll bend your ear some more, if you've got the patience for it. 
This is a seedling, the youngest phase of life for a plant. You will need energy to plant a seed in a planter or the ground. After a seed is planted, you can use plant growth spells on it to help it flourish. Plants require some things to thrive and survive. Water, sunshine, pollination, magic, and even music. Plants that are cared for with spells to satisfy their needs will advance through the stages of life. Next, you should examine the young plant. This is a young plant in its next stage of life after seedling. You can observe your plant's growth visually and by using some simple spells. The plow spell allows you to remove a plant or dirt pile if you wish to do so. The revive spell allows you to transform a wilting plant into a young plant ready to grow once more. Now you should examine the mature plant. This is a mature plant in the fullness of its growth. When a plant becomes mature, it can be harvested. You can harvest a plant by interacting with it. Each type of plant yields a different harvest. Reagents, pet snacks, gold, treasure cards, or more seeds. You can harvest from a plant as long as it's in its mature stage of life. It's now time to take a look at the elder plant. This is an elder plant, the final stage of a plant's life cycle. Many plants won't reach this stage. An elder plant can be harvested one final time with much greater possible rewards. Once an elder plant is harvested, it disappears and cannot be revived. You should return to speak to Farley. So, there you have it. Think you know it all now? Don't get carried away. I've still much to teach. I'm sad to say that gardening isn't all nurturing and happiness. Plants can be endangered by some very real threats. Take a look at the two unhealthy-looking specimens to the other side of me. Come back when you've seen for yourself what can happen. This plant is wilting. It will die before too long if it's not taken care of. Plants can die if their needs are not met, or if they are killed by pests. Plants have likes and dislikes, things that encourage or discourage their growth. A plant's likes are things it enjoys being near. These can include other types of plants or gardening items. A plant will flourish if it is near things that it likes, while things it dislikes will cause it to become unhealthy. An important part of gardening is learning how to arrange your plants and create a healthy garden for them. You should examine the dead plant now. This plant is dead. Now all that can be done is to plow it over or revive it as a seedling. The greatest threat to plants are pests. Pests can infest a plant and hinder its growth. If pests are not eliminated, eventually the plant will begin to wilt and die. When a plant is infested by pests, it cannot be harvested and growth spells will have no effect. To eliminate pests, you must use pest-fighting spells. To eliminate a pest, the spell must be of high enough rank. You can purchase pest-fighting spells from vendors throughout the spiral, or even win them as treasures. Farley can tell you more about how to get started gardening. It's a sorry state to see plants doing so poorly, but it's important to know what risks there are when gardening. I think by now you've learned the basics of planting and gardening. If you've been paying attention, the seed blossom gave you should be enough to get you started. I encourage you to try it out. You've already got the basic spells to care for your plant, and I can sell you additional spells and items for your garden. As you continue to garden, you'll reap the rewards in the form of harvests, badges, and even experience. I look forward to seeing you again with your newfound green thumb displayed oh so proudly. Best of luck to you.